Hi friends, here in this video, I'll be deriving the formula of volumetric strain for a thin cylinder. So, let's get started. Now, in order to explain the volumetric strain for a thin cylindrical shell, I'll draw the diagram of a thin cylindrical shell here. So here is a thin cylinder having internal diameter d and thickness is small t both are in terms of mm. There is an internal pressure due to the fluid which is stored inside the thin cylinder having pressure small p and the unit is newton per mm square then l is the length of this cylinder. Now first I will write down that what is the circumferential strain here. So first of all since circumferential strain. That is change in diameter upon the original diameter because circumferential strain would be due to the circumferential stress changing the diameter. So it is change in diameter upon original diameter. And similarly, the longitudinal strain denoted by E suffix L that is change in length upon original length. And since both are strains, they won't be having any unit here. I'll give this as equation first, circumferential strain. Equation second, longitudinal strain. And when I show it onto the thin cylinder, here we have the circumferential strain. It is due to the circumferential stress. And longitudinal strain is due to the longitudinal stress. Both are perpendicular to each other. And because of the circumferential strain, there is change in diameter, whereas due to the longitudinal strain, there is change in length, that is the length will go on increasing, the diameter would go on reducing. Whereas for circumferential strain, the diameter increases and the length decreases. So these same circumferential strain and longitudinal strain can also be written as for the thin cylinder, that is. circumferential strain if I want to write out write it for the complete cylinder then it would be since we know that as per the Hooke's law Young's modulus is given by stress upon strain so therefore strain is stress upon Young's modulus so I am going to use this relation when I am writing for the circumferential strain in that case here we are going to have circumferential stress upon Young's modulus. Then what is the effect of the circumferential strain on the length is that when the diameter increases due to the circumferential strain, the length decreases. So minus this circumferential strain is we can say that it is called as the linear strain and then when the length is reducing that is called as the lateral strain and it can be written as mu which is the Poisson's ratio into the longitudinal stress divided by the Young's modulus. So that would be equation 3 and where mu is called as Poisson's ratio and it is given by the lateral strain the ratio of lateral strain to the linear strain. So it means when the diameter increases the length decreases so the total circumferential strain for the cylinder is here. Similarly I will write down the longitudinal strain. It would be longitudinal stress upon the Young's modulus and when the length of the cylinder increases due to the longitudinal stress, the diameter reduces. So the effect on the diameter is called as a lateral strain which is minus mu into circumferential stress divided by the Young's modulus.
so previously which i had written circumferential strain and longitudinal strain these are the general formula and here i have applied it to the complete thin cylinder next also i can say that the volume of the cylinder is given by volume v is equal to pi by 4 d square that is cross sectional area multiplied by the length of the cylinder then differentiating throughout we get now i would be differentiating this equation so volume here that would be dv and then when i differentiate this i am going to get it as we have to differentiate it partially so that would be pi by 4 d square differentiation of l so delta l plus next pi l by 4 would be taken together differentiation of d square would be 2d delta d then after reaching up till here pi by 4 d square will remain as it is delta l will remain as it is now i am going to multiply and divide by l here because i want to write this equation in a special form then similarly we have pi l by 4 2d delta d as it is and i am going to multiply and divide with the diameter here so therefore i can say that pi by 4 d square into this l would be written here and here we have delta l upon l next plus here also i can see this d and d that would become d square so pi by 4 d square into l now 2d would remain as it is and here we have basically 2 into d delta so that would be 2 d delta upon delta upon d now pi by 4 d square l would be taken common so therefore the change in volume would be pi by 4 d square into l taken common delta l upon l that is nothing but we can say that it is the change in length or in other words that is the longitudinal strain plus pi by 4 d square l has been taken common so here we have 2 delta d by d so i'll write here delta l upon l was longitudinal strain delta d by d is the circumferential strain so we have 2 ec that is the circumferential strain because here we have 2 and then therefore dv will, will remain as it is pi by 4 d square l that is the original volume finally when i bring v here so we get change in volume upon original volume is el plus 2 ec and this change in volume by original volume is nothing but the volumetric strain so therefore volumetric strain is equal to change in volume upon original volume is equal to the longitudinal strain plus twice of the circumferential strain so in short that is the formula for volumetric strain in case of a thin cylindrical shell at the end if you'll find my videos helpful you can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends thanks for watching